individual rights. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, invites you to the conversation. The Yaron Brook Show starts now on AM 560. The answer. Well, welcome everybody to the Yaron Brook Show. And um, this is going to be a special show because this is actually my last show. My last time at least for now, on AM560. It's, it's been a cool run. I've been doing this for uh, two years now, almost two years. And uh, this is it. This is it. So uh, I've enjoyed it. I hope you have. Um, it, it, you know, it's hard to tell when you do radio if anybody's listening on the other side, but, but you guys have called in and you've participated and you've yelled at me and you've been pissed off and... Uh, so I know you're out there. I, you know that's always that's always nice to have that kind of uh, that kind of feedback. Once in a while, you've even agreed with something I've said. So thank you, thank you, uh, Chicago. Thank you uh, for all of you, for everybody at AM560, for the AM560 family, for hosting the Iran Brook Show for the last two years. But um, you know, it's it's time to move on. Time to try some uh, some other things. And I encourage all of you who are listening who have been listening, uh, to uh, stay in touch. Uh, you know, follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Yaron Brook, Y-A-R-O-N-B-R-O-O-K. Or you can uh, like me on Facebook. And, you know, even if you don't like me, you can like me on Facebook. It's at facebook.com slash ybrook, Y-B-R-O-O-K. And uh, you can also listen to my other podcast, my podcast that is on um, – that is on uh, the internet, and you can get basically go to any podcasting app, any podcasting app. Just type in the Yaron Brook Show, and uh, you can download all the episodes, uh, the new episodes. I will continue to be doing uh, podcasts, uh, doing continue to be doing live podcasts with audiences, with taking calls, so you can participate and you can get involved and engage. It'll just be online rather than uh, live over the air like we do here on AM560, and, and let me just say, I'm, I'm about to leave for a long trip. I'm um, leaving Monday for a trip around the world, almost five weeks. Uh, Japan, South Korea, China, Mongolia, Hong Kong, Israel, London, and even South Carolina, and then back to the California. And during that time, I'll be broadcasting uh, live from all of those places around the world or anywhere I can get a dependable internet connection. I'll be, I'll be doing shows from all those places. So I, I hope you listen in. I hope you go to your podcast app and download, download the Iran Brook Show and, and stay engaged. But when I get back, um, a little bit after I get back, sometime in mid-June, well, let's have some, I think, exciting announcements on the expansion of the Iran Brook Show and some new initiatives and some new things that are going on. Also look for a new website, the Iran, iranbrookshow.com. Uh, will be coming uh, probably mid-June. So uh, the next six weeks, we're going to be refiguring everything, and we'll be going to come out the blocks in mid-June bigger and stronger than ever. So while I will not be broadcasting live here on AM560 anymore, I really do hope uh, you all, you guys all stay in touch and stay engaged and um, and follow me, follow me on all those different venues and all those different places, social media, and in the podcasting world. So I thought what I'd do today is I really want to try to summarize kind of what I've talked about uh, over the last two years. And, you know, we've talked a lot about concrete issues, a lot about news, a lot about politics. I, you guys disagreed with me about Trump quite violently, I'd say, at, uh, at the Liberty Summit in, uh, in Chicago, uh, uh, you know, before the elections. But... Um, but I've always tried to bring it back to, to more philosophical points, to principles. The principles on which I live, the principles by which I think, the principles by which I believe this country should be governed. And, and that I fear that both under Donald Trump and, and, and really under no administration in, in, the, in the really distant past, have we had a president who lived under these principles. But, but so what I thought today as I do, is I'd like to summarize those principles. I'd like to, I'd like to run down those principles and, and think about what would be the applications if we actually did it. Because if, if you remember anything from the show, it's not any particular thing that I said about Donald Trump, about foreign policy, about 
I don't know Black Lives Matter, about any of those issues. What I'd like you to remember are the principles by which I think this country should be governed. The principles that animated the founding fathers, the principles that led to the creation of this greatest country in human history, the principles that we are losing fast, losing fast out there in the political world, the principles that President You know, President Trump never mentions, Obama couldn't mention, Bush bastardized, and and you can go on and on backwards from there. So what are those? What are those principles? And what I thought is we'd start, we'd start with politics and work ourselves backwards philosophically. We'd start with the political principles, the principles of governing, and then we'd go backwards to the principles of living, to the principles as individuals, because I think at the end of the day, Politics is just an outcome of the ideas and the beliefs and the kind of life we as individuals want to live. If you want to be told what to do, you love big government. If you don't trust your own mind, you love big government. If you believe, if you really believe that you are your brother's keeper and every stranger on the street corner is your brother, then you're going to love big government. So, when this is the only show, yes, I'm pretty sure that I can say this wholeheartedly, this is the only show that has ever been or has been on air any time in Chicago live or anywhere else live for that matter, where these very, very basic premises have been challenged. You are not your brother's keeper. You have a mind, use it. And the government is not your mother to tell you what you can and cannot do and to make you feel guilty if you don't do it. All right. So um, we, are, we are going to be talking about the principles. So, so what are those principles? What are the fundamental principles that we've talked about on this show that guide, that should guide our political world, that should guide our politicians, that should guide political decisions, and yet they don't. What is the role of government? What is the purpose of government? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm interested in in your views, and in your maybe telling me what you think, what you think, if you've been listening to the show, what have you learned, if you've learned anything? So, um, you know, call in, 312-642-5600, 312-642-5600. As I said, you know, I love the fact that you've been calling in all these shows. Sean, don't know how I would have done this show without you. So thank you, Sean. Uh, but, but all of you guys, uh, thank you. But Colin, what, what, what was the one principle that you took away from the Iran Book Show if you've been listening, even if you've listened to just a few episodes over the last couple of years? 312-642-5600. Well, I hope that one of those principles is that what made the United States unique What made the United States of America unique in its founding is that it is the first, the first state, the first country to be founded, to be founded on a moral principle, to be founded on the idea, the fundamental idea that your life belongs to you. It does not belong to the king, to the state, to the community, to the group to the tribe, to anybody else but you. And that therefore you have an inalienable right to live your life as you see fit, to pursue the rational values that you deem necessary for your life, for your success, for your flourishing, for, God forbid, your happiness. The government is instituted not to tell you how to live, not to dictate to you how you live, not to impose its will on you, but government is instituted to protect you, to defend you, to leave you alone, to prevent your neighbors from interfering with you so that you can live the best life that you can live, so that you can live, you can pursue, you can act free of coercion. And the founders understood that the most coercive entity in human history of the individual has always been the tribe, the collective government. 
founders were really interested in minority rights. <laughs> they understood that the smallest minority on earth is the individual, and it is rights, the individual's rights that must be protected. Now, granted, they were inconsistent about that protection. They, they, they maintained the institution of slavery. But by declaring what they declared in the Declaration of Independence, by writing a constitution that protected individual rights, they made it possible for that institution to be eliminated from the face of the earth. And in that sense, they are the heroes of the disappearance of slavery. So, your life is yours. The government's job is to protect it. That's a principle I hope you learned from this show. We'll be right back after these messages. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. From the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Farouk Basir taking a look at traffic. We'll start on the south side where there's a hit and run accident. Cermak Road westbound after State Street in Highland, Indiana. We're seeing an accident. Indianapolis Boulevard north of Main Street. And uh, also in Indiana, Route 65, we're seeing a slow ramp to westbound 8094. And as traffic stop and go northbound back to 49th Avenue on the Stevenson, the Ryan ramp is jammed. And that has traffic stop and go inbound from the Ryan to uh, Lakeshore Drive. And Niles was seeing an accident. Beckwith Road at Washington Street. Wheaton, there's an accident. Gary Avenue near Wesley Street. And Elmhurst, we're seeing an accident. North Avenue at Route 83. Your weather today, cold with rain, a high of 46 degrees. Tonight, heavy rain and a thunderstorm possible, low 42. Currently, it's rainy and 43. And your next report's in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. There's been a lot of talk recently about fake news. And it's gotten a lot harder to know who in the media you can trust. Too often, reading just the headlines can be misleading. You need to turn to a place that you can trust. A place that gives you more than just the headlines. And more than just the mainstream media spin. What you need are answers. That's why we're here. Get the latest news. Find out what it means and why it's important to you. Real news. Real answers. Join us on AM560. The Answer. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit Ayn Rand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to Ayn Rand.org today. If you like what you hear on the Yaron Brook Show and want to engage more with host Yaron Brook, be sure to follow him on social media. Lucky for you, it's easier than ever to get updates, ask questions, and hear answers from one of the leading minds in objectivism. Follow Yaron today on Twitter, at Yaron Brook. YouTube, Why Brook. That's Twitter, at Yaron Brook. And YouTube, Why Brook. You can also sign up for show updates at Blog Talk Radio. Simply search the Yaron Brook Show. How would you like to lose 10, 15, even 25 pounds in the next 30 days? Well, I'm about to tell you how you can do it for free right now. You've probably heard of Beachbody or seen their workout DVDs on TV like P90X, Insanity, and 21 Day Fix. Well, they just launched a beta trial of their new online video service called Beachbody On Demand. And they're inviting you to use it for free for 30 days. Now, here's the catch. In return, all they want is for you to let them know what you think of their new on-demand service so they can make it the best fitness and weight loss site ever created. Just text the word STREAM to 303030 and you can do 30 days of P90X, Insanity, Brazil Butt Lift, or one of 500 other beach body workouts for free. And that means you can lose 10, 20, even 30 pounds without paying a dime. Just text STREAM to 303030. That's S-T-R-E-A-M to 303030 to get started for free right now. Message and data rates may apply. Membership fees apply after 30-day free trial. Cancel any time. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. Hey, so as I was mentioning, um, this is my last show on AM560, but don't worry. You know, if you follow my podcast, uh, there won't be, starting in mid-June, if anything, there's going to be an increase in the number of, uh, of hours that I'm doing by podcast, not a decrease. So don't worry about losing a show. Ultimately, there's going to be more Yaron Brooks show on air than less. And as I said, I enjoyed AM560. Thank you. 
Jonathan Honing for often calling in as a uh, disgruntled leftist and uh, challenging me on the thing that I, uh, I've been talking about. So uh, I don't know what I would have done without you. And we got Kim on the line. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Kim, are you there? I'm disappointed to hear we're going to lose you on 560. Um, I've enjoyed your show. Well, so I appreciate that. Today. Thank you. I, I, so, 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 tell me what 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 did you like? What did you what did you enjoy about the show? I, well, I was all, I was intrigued by your presentation of your beliefs and your understanding and, and your intellectual uh, pulling apart of the like the puzzle that is this life. I, uh, I, I come from more of a religious perspective, and I know that at times. You know, you've expressed yourself on that sure. so much. But you intrigued me. So I actually, uh, a friend and I came in and heard you speak at, uh, uh, I forget the name of the institute, is in the suburbs out there um, last fall, I think it was. Good. And, and I so much appreciate how you intellectually have taken the arguments and that different people present. And, you, you, you know, even what you were just saying today about how, if you think you're your brother's keeper, well, that can lead to, unfortunately, to socialism. Yep. Where, and, and, and you've explained that in such a way that, for me, it's like, this makes so much good sense. Because, like I said, I come from more of a religious perspective, and it's helped me to formulate my my thinking in my mind. So, I, 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 oh, boy, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you being on at 4 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean that that's perfect. That you know, if 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 I want to do anything on these shows, it's to get you guys thinking. You know, it's to get you guys thinking in a different way, to challenge your beliefs, to 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 really you know reframe the debate and and to make it more intellectual. We get a lot of emotion out there. We get a lot of people yelling at one another out there. But I want to I, I want a more intellectual population. I want people thinking for themselves about the issues. That they that they face and look, there they shouldn't be any sacred cows out there, in spite of what these lefties tell us on university campuses. Right. And sometimes we're going to offend each other and so on. But as long as we're doing it in a way that's intellectual, in a way that broadens our mind, in a way that gets us thinking, all of that is positive. All of that is good. So Kim, yeah. really appreciate the support. And look, if if you've got an iPhone or you've got one of those. Uh, Samsung phones. I mean, you can you can download my show every week. It'll continue to be on there, and I hope to continue stimulating your thought. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you. The one the one thing I've taken away from your show is that it's it's too easy to say I'm a member of this flag or that flag, Republican, Democrat, yep. whatever. That's too easy. You can't just say, Oh, I'm this, I'm that. Then my side's right, the other side's wrong. No, no, no. It takes more. You know, more deconstruction of the arguments to come to a good answer. That's, that's, what, that's the biggest thing I've learned from you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Kim. So, in, in other words, it's it's about thinking. It's it's about analyzing. It's about figuring out what does these people really stand for, and what do I stand for, and do and how much of their agenda do I buy into, and how much do I don't buy into. So, absolutely, it's 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 all about figuring out who you are as an individual, and then. Do you align ideologically with anybody out there? And, and, and the fact is, I find myself, and I know you guys know this, I don't align with the Democrats and I don't align with the Republicans, not if they're the party of Donald Trump, but even the other candidates, I just don't align with them. I look at principle by principle or even issue by issue. And I say, I agree with this, I disagree with this, I agree with this, I disagree with this. And I look at the both parties and I look at all sides. And like this last election, I didn't vote for any of them because the fact is I couldn't get comfortable with either party in terms of representing any aspect of my views. Because, again, my view is that government, government should be there to have a great police force, a great military that really places America first, that really pursues America's interest. But what does it mean to pursue America's interest? It's not some geographic area. It's not some ethnic group. It's not particular borders, it's not walls. Pursuing America's interest means protecting the individual rights, protecting the life and property of American citizens. It means if you are threatening America, I crush you, I destroy you, I make it so painful for you, you will never do it again. 
That's what America first foreign policy means. It also means, though, that I protect and defend and respect the individual rights of Americans, which means the right of an American to trade with anybody, anybody in the world, with no barriers, with no tariffs, with no taxes that suggest that I like these trades and I don't like those trades. One of the reasons, one of the reasons I'm so opposed to this president and his anti-trade agenda is that it's an anti-individual rights agenda. It's an agenda that is offensive to the individual rights of Americans. That's what trade barriers are. I should be able, I should be able to, and the government should protect my freedom to trade with anybody I want as long as they're not an enemy of the United States, anywhere I want, no matter where they live, and no matter what kind of trade barriers his government has imposed on him. All right, we've got uh, Mendel, who wants to chat about my overall agenda. Hey, Mendel, how's it going? Uh, your own is going really well, and I just wanted to thank you. You know, at first, when I first started listening to your show, I was very much against a lot of your ideas, and then I just think I realized how radical of what you and objectivism and Ayn Rand are proposing. And, you know, you, oftentimes we, out, we seem like we're very much alone out here listening to these ideas, but you've created such a community and such a movement on AM560, on your Twitter feed, on your podcast, um, that has really coalesced so many like-minded individuals all over the world. So thank you from us here in Chicago for inspiring us and continuing to build a movement towards reason and rationality and happiness for for each of us as individuals. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that, Menno. Thank, thank you. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling in on a regular basis and uh, for listening. And yes, I mean, we're trying to make this an international movement, a movement of individualists, a movement of people dedicated to their own happiness, a movement of people dedicated to their own freedom. And if you want to be a part of that movement, then join us. Join us. Join, you know, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. And look up Ayn Rand. I mean, at the end of the day, and, and this is really important, at the end of the day, all of my ideas, all of my philosophical ideas, my principles, come from the writings and thinking of Ayn Rand, the, the, the author of Atlas Shrugged. I mean, if you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, you're way behind, man. I mean, everybody, everybody has read Atlas Shrugged, including many of Trump's cabinet members and, and, and most CEOs of successful companies. And you've got to catch up. You've got to read Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead and The Virtue of Selfishness. There's a title for you. And Capitalism, Not Known Ideal. So... Please join me in reading Ayn Rand, in following me on Twitter, Facebook, and, and, and subscribing to my podcast uh, so that we keep in touch. But, I, yeah, I, I mean, this is, this, is a, this is the movement for freedom. Hey, uh, uh, Skyla, how's it going? Doing well, sir. How are you? Good, good. I would like to know your greatest takeaway, your greatest moment uh, from uh, being on AM5 oh, wow. TV. <laughs> you know, I don't know what my greatest moment is. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed it. It, it. You know, being on 560 uh, has allowed me to interact with a lot of people who are not necessarily already my fans, who don't necessarily already agree with me, which is too often that's who I interact with, particularly on my, uh, on my uh, Facebook and Twitter stuff. It, 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 it's broadened the scope of the, of the people. Um, and, and it's presented challenges as a consequence because people don't agree with me. I mean, uh, we had a lot of fun last year at the Liberty Summit where uh, they wanted me off the stage and deported from the country because I did to, uh, to criticize Donald Trump. So, you know, it's exposed me and, and it's exposed you guys to, to, to callers who uh, are not my obvious followers. So I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And let me be clear. This is not going away. So AM 560 in Chicago is going away. But I intend to continue to engage with these audiences, with you. I intend to continue to engage with audiences who disagree with me. And uh, we're going to continue to have fun and continue to try to fight uh, to really change this world. And, I, you know, and we're going to be successful. So, Skyla, thank you for calling. Thanks uh, for being part of this show. Uh, when we come back, we've got Reed on the line. And uh, you're listening to your own book show. Last time, this is the last time on AM560 Chicago. We'll be right back after this break. 
There's been a lot of talk recently about fake news. And it's gotten a lot harder to know who in the media you can trust. Too often, reading just the headlines can be misleading. You need to turn to a place that you can trust. A place that gives you more than just the headlines. And more than just the mainstream media spin. What you need are answers. That's why we're here. Get the latest news. Find out what it means and why it's important to you. Real news. Real answers. Join us on AM560. The Answer. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. More American blood shed in the fight to retake an Iraqi city from ISIS. A spokesman for U.S. Central Command says a U.S. soldier has been killed near Mosul as American allies and Iraqi government forces work to drive ISIS out of the region. That soldier died from wounds sustained during an explosion. ISIS has been known to leave behind explosive booby traps and everything from furniture inside homes to toys and food left outside. Fox's Jill Nato. This makes for three Americans killed in action in Iraq and Afghanistan this week. Thousands of supporters on hand in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where President Trump will mark his 100th day in office with a giant rally. Some of them were here as early as 4.30 this morning to take part in what is expected to be a very festive evening. In fact, officials here expect an overflow crowd here tonight that could top 10,000, maybe even up to 11,000. Fox's Kevin Cork, Fox News. We report, you decide. How can you get from here to there? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Farouk Basir taking a look at traffic. We'll start in Highland, Indiana, where we have an accident. Indianapolis Boulevard, north of Main Street. On the south side here, a hit and run. Cermak Road, westbound after State Street in Hinsdale, a new accident. Ogden Avenue at um, Madison Street. And also in Darien, we're seeing an accident. Lamont Road and 87th Street in Plainfield. We have an accident. Route 30 at 119th Street. And in Niles, an accident. Beckwith Road and North Washington Street. Also Wheaton, we're seeing an accident. Gary Avenue near Wesley Street. And in Elmhurst, we're seeing an accident. North Avenue and Route 83. Your weather here. Is probably the cause for a lot of that stuff today. Cold with rain and a high of 46. Tonight, heavy rain with a possible thunderstorm, a low of 42 degrees. Currently, it's rainy and 43. And your next report in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Rourke, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. The Ayn Rand Institute campus is an exciting online destination offering free e-courses on Ayn Rand and her revolutionary philosophy of objectivism. Whether you recently picked up your first Rand book or have been reading her novels and nonfiction for years, ARI campus has something for you. On campus, you'll discover a variety of multimedia courses covering Rand's literary classics, specific aspects of thought and how to apply her ideas to your life. Get started today at campus.aynrand.org. See you on campus. This is Michael David from Seattle. I'm 51 years old, and six months ago, I started taking Andro 400 to increase my testosterone. Since then, I've lost 35 pounds of fat, and my waist went from size 38 to size 32. I have more energy, and I look and feel 20 years younger. And now my wife tells me I have to take Andro 400. Hi, this is Ron Johnson from Utah. After 10 weeks of taking Andro 400, I lost 13 pounds, and my waist went from 36 to 33. That was eight years ago. I continue to take Andro 400, and I've maintained my weight at 172, gained muscle and energy. I'm 63 now and feel better than I have in 30 years. Andro 400, the natural way to increase testosterone, lose belly fat, gain energy, and feel great. Try Andro 400, the safe, effective, affordable way to boost your testosterone. Go to andro400.com or call 888-400-0435. 
888-400-0435. A volatile stock market, out of control national debt, domestic and global events. Can your retirement survive? Listen to Grow My Retirement, Saturday afternoons at 2, with Bill Geiger of Geiger Wealth Management. Bill translates today's complex retirement issues into easy-to-understand steps to help you create a retirement income you can't outlive. This is serious stuff. Grow My Retirement, Saturday afternoons at 2, here on AM560, The Answer. No traditional conservative view, nor the standard libertarian ones. Welcome back to the discussion of Ayn Rand's radical fundamental principles of freedom. This is the Yaron Brook Show on AM560, The Answer. You know, the biggest frustration of doing these AM560 shows is that they're so short. You know, in one hour, there's only so much you can talk about, particularly with all the commercials and all the advertising. It doesn't even boil down to an hour. It's maybe 40 minutes. And how can you deal with some of these deeper ideas in only 40 minutes. That, that, is always, that has been the challenge from day one in AM560. I've tried to live with it. I think a future iteration of the AM560 show is probably going to be a longer show. All right, we got uh, Reed online. Uh, hey, Reed, how's it going? Reed, you there? Hello? All right, I can't hear him. Maybe we can um, try him again in a little while. All right, Reed? Nope, can't hear him. All right, maybe my producer can do some magic and uh, Reed can come back online. If Reed, you're there, just yell out at some point or, or maybe hang up and, and try dialing in again. Um, would love to hear from you. So political principle number one was, right, the fact that the government should – Leave us alone. Protect us. Protect us. But otherwise, leave us alone. So I'm against regulations. I'm against redistribution of wealth. If you want to help other people, help other people. Get together with your neighbors and form a, a voluntary society to help the homeless people, you know, under the bridge, by the highway. But don't force everybody to participate. It, you can't. It's wrong. It's wrong to use violence against your neighbor, even if you believe that the cause is a good cause. A good cause does not justify the use of force. That's another principle that I've been talking about. A good cause does not justify the use of physical force against your neighbor. So argue, debate, discuss, try to convince, get voluntary buy-ins from your friends and neighbors and the people around you. But you don't get to pull out a gun and you don't get to use government to pull out the gun to force people to participate in whatever scheme you're up to. Government should not redistribute wealth and government should not regulate wealth. Leave us alone. That's the principle the funny fathers talked about. Thomas Jefferson says, if my neighbor does not have his hand in my pocket, it's none of my business what he does. What he does is in business or what he does in his bedroom. So leave us alone. All right, Reed is back. Let's see if we can hear him this time. Hey, Reed. Sorry, you're Ron. That was my fault. <laughs> my phone on mute, I think. <laughs> I, uh, I just wanted to say uh, it was great seeing you a few weeks ago here in Chicago, and I'm going to miss you uh, now that I'm living here on AM. But I, I follow you on every blog show so well, i appreciate I'm that still there with you i appreciate that and uh as far as your question about what i what i get out of your show uh the main thing i get is is truth yeah and Thanks. both the facts and your evaluations are just you're so brilliant i really appreciate it great i really appreciate that thanks reed thanks for coming a few weeks ago to dive into chicago and yeah keep listening we're, we're going to keep producing content we're going to keep being out there uh, Yaron Brook is not going anywhere. If anything, we're going to ramp up production uh, come uh, come this summer. And, and certainly in 2018, you're going to see a lot more of me, whether you want to or not. I guess if you don't want to, you can turn it off. Wow, there's an off switch. Maybe the government doesn't have to regulate what we listen to and what we watch. Because if we don't like it, we can turn it off. Maybe we should take responsibility over our own children. And if we don't want them to watch something, we turn the television off rather than have the government institute standards. 
to tell us what our children can and cannot watch. Standards of the used to be just pretty awful. Pretty awful. So that's kind of the political principle. Political principle is the governor's there to protect my rights. Rights, I cannot have a right to other people's stuff. Rights mean freedoms. It means you have a freedom to go out there and do what you deem necessary in order to make a living, in order to live your life, in order to pursue your own happiness. As long as you don't violate other people's rights, and the only way to violate other people's rights, by the way, is by using force. Force, fraud, fraud is a form of force. By lying, cheating, stealing, that's the only way. By using coercion. So as long as we ban coercion, then people should be allowed to do whatever the hell they want, whether we like it or not, as long as they're not hurting other people. And of course, really what we're doing this is to protect to protect the people who really want to live a good life, who really want to be rational about the choices they make, who want to be free. So it's about freedom, right? The whole show is about freedom. It's about the freedom of the individual to live his life as he sees fit without having to, to, to succumb to the authority and the coercion and the force of the state or of his neighbors or anybody else. And, of course, underlying that is really the idea of the sanctity of the individual, the idea that individual life, individual flourishing, individual happiness is the goal of morality. And we'll talk about that when we get back. We'll talk about what it means to be self-interested, because we talked about that a lot on the show, and how every human being should be self-interested. Otherwise, what's the point of living? What's the point of living if you don't live? The whole point of living is to live the best damn life you can. We'll be right back after this. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. From the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Farouk Basir taking a look at traffic. We'll start on the south side, 57 inbound. We're seeing an accident between 115th and 107th Street, and that has the left lane block. That's traffic stop and go back to 119th Street. Also on the south side, we have a hit and run accident. Cermak Road westbound after State Street. In Highland, Indiana, we're seeing an accident. Indianapolis Boulevard north of Main Street. And on 55, we're seeing a uh, center lane blockage due to a large pothole, and that's between Weber Road and Veterans Memorial Tollway. So uh, the maintenance crews are en route to try to get that filled up. And also in Plainfield, we're seeing an accident, Route 30 and 119th Street. Your weather today, rainy and cold with a high of 46 degrees. Tonight, heavy rain and a possible thunderstorm, low of 42. Currently, it's rainy and 43. And your next report is in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there is a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free books to teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at AynRand.org slash support. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today. 2017 marks the 60th anniversary of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Twelve years in the writing, it is Rand's masterwork. Despite being published six decades ago, the novel continues to gain recognition and profoundly influence business leaders, thought leaders, and a growing number of political leaders. Its presence in today's culture cannot be denied. The fascination with Atlas Shrugged persists because it grapples with the fundamental problems of human existence and presents radically new answers. An updated cover for the mass market edition of the novel recently hit stores. Order your copy today at Amazon. Whether you're an adoring fan who wants to add this new edition to your personal library or someone who wants to read the book for the first time, 
To see what all the fuss is about, pick up your copy of Atlas Shrugged today. Order on Amazon. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM 560. The answer. So uh, we've been talking about kind of the principles that I've been trying to articulate in these shows, trying to convey to you guys, and, and hopefully in some cases have been successful. Uh, if, if you want to call in and uh, in, in illustrate that, uh, 312-642-5600, 312-642-5600. But beyond the politics, I really try to bring in a different approach to morality, a different approach to ethics. And, and we said earlier, I try to inculcate this idea that you are not your brother's keeper. So whose keeper are you? Well, who said you should be anybody's keeper? But what you really keeper is, is of yourself. Ayn Rand stood for a new morality, a new moral code, and I think in a, a, a really, really, really important moral code, the most important moral code maybe in 2,000 years that's been brought in front of humanity, the moral code of rational self-interest. The idea that your purpose in life should not be to live for others, should not be to serve, should not be to sacrifice, but to live, to live the best life that you can live for your sake of your own happiness. So a selfish moral code, not a selfish in a sense of treating other people badly, but selfish in a sense of taking care of self, of living a good life for oneself. Selfish in a sense that you are the beneficiary of your moral actions. So the whole idea is to live the best life. And, and the tool we have as human beings to live the best life that we can is our mind. So if you care about your own life, if you care about your own success, if you care about living the best life that you can live, the tool that you must cultivate, the tool that you must embrace, the tool that you must work hard on is your mind, is your reason, is your rational faculty. And this is where I often get into trouble with those of you who are religious, because faith is the opposite of reason. And I rejected faith a long, long time ago because of that, because I believe in the human mind. I believe it is our mind that learns about reality, that integrates the knowledge from reality, that allows us to build and create and make stuff. And we've talked about this. And, and the only way to analyze events of the day, the only way to analyze the news, the only way to know who to vote for, the only way to know which government policies are good and which government policies are bad is, is reason. That's the only way. It's with facts. It's rationally. It's thinking. All right, we got Michael calling in. Hey, Michael, how's it going? Hi, Aaron. Fine. Uh one thing I want to express is uh, thank you for letting me talk to you for 11 times. And, uh, <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, I think on Ayn Rand, uh, it's probably the only person uh, in the world that can say right to life. There's yep. no church, the government, uh, institution that can say those words, yep. right to life. Yep. Nobody, Republican, Democrat. No, they haven't earned it. The only the only people who could historically say it were the founding fathers and kind of the the, the the people who set the founding fathers up, like John Locke and other figures in the Enlightenment. But but really, since the founding, or certainly since the early nineteenth century, uh, very few people have understood what the right to life means and have understood what yeah. kind of uh, what that entailed, what that required, and what kind of government and what kind of what kind of life. As you as an individual that entails, and, and what kind of government that entails? I'm going to miss you. This is my 11th and last time I'd be able to talk to you. I'm very sad day for me. Uh, I've been a follower since 1963. Wow, wow. I, I read her book, the first book back then. And well, I, I've contributed to the Iron Man Institute since 85. So I, uh, I really appreciate really, that. Uh, well, hopefully we can get you to listen I, to the I podcast really on, 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 on your phone or something like that. Take care, and, and good luck to you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling today. And, and I really, again, I really appreciate all of you listeners and all of you have called in. You know, Sean hasn't called yet. I'm a little worried about that. But, um, but really, uh, thank you all. You know, you've made this a lot of fun. Um, 
so as I said, you know, self-interest, as Ayn Rand understood it, not just as Ayn Rand understood it, as in reality, self-interest requires one to use one's mind. If you want to live a good life, you have to think, you have to use reason, you have to be rational. Altruism, on the other hand, while people assume that altruism means being nice to people, altruism actually means sacrificing for others. It means being selfless. It means the exact opposite of being self-interested. It means living for the sake of others, and that cannot be rational. It cannot be right that I exist as a biological entity in order to live for some other biological entity. I exist in order to live for myself. I exist in order to make the most of my own short existence, my own life. So being a sacrificial animal, I don't accept that as a standard for anything. Human beings are not sacrificial animals. And so altruism is evil. Altruism is evil. You can't have rational altruism. Altruism, the idea that the individual should live for the sake of other individuals or for the group or for the state. That moral idea that the individual life is not an end in itself, that the individual's life is not the ultimate value, that his own happiness is not the ultimate goal, that's an evil ideology. That's a bad ideology. I don't accept altruism of any kind if that's what altruism means. And look... That's what it means. That's what philosophers, how philosophers have defined altruism, is meaning living for the sake of others. I don't live for the sake of anybody. I live for my own sake. I have a lot of people around me. I have a lot of friends. I have a wife that I've lived with for 35 years. I have kids, but I don't live for them. I live for myself. Oh, Sean's here. We'll get to him right after the break. Mark your calendar. Objectivist Summer Conference 2017, or OCON 2017 for short, will it take place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It doesn't look like Sean's lit up on my June screen through thing the 15th. correctly. The conference will be held at this historical center of industrial America and will celebrate productive heroes oh, and the heroism know. of productiveness. They'll also oh, celebrate okay. the 60th anniversary of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Visit objectivistconferences.com to explore their first-time attendee discount and special rates for young adults. Students, you can apply for a scholarship to cover some or all of your expenses. <laughs> okay, no problem. Experience the uniquely inspiring events only an objectivist conference offers. Register, and you'll have the opportunity to attend intellectually stimulating talks, panel discussions, and workshops with people who share your values. Visit objectivistconferences.com and sign up today. That's objectivistconferences.com. See you at Ocon 2017. How would you like to lose 10, 15, even 25 pounds in the next 30 days? Well, I'm about to tell you how you can do it for free right now. You've probably heard of Beachbody or seen their workout DVDs on TV like P90X, Insanity, and 21 Day Fix. Well, they just launched a beta trial of their new online video service called Beachbody On Demand, and they're inviting you to use it for free for 30 days. Now, here's the catch. In return, all they want is for you to let them know what you think of their new on-demand service so they can make it the best fitness and weight loss site ever created. Just text the word STREAM to 303030 and you can do 30 days of P90X, Insanity, Brazil Butt Lift, or one of 500 other beach body workouts for free. And that means you can lose 10, 20, even 30 pounds without paying a dime. Just text STREAM to 303030. That's S-T-R-E-A-M to 303030 to get started for free right now. Message and data rates may apply. Membership fees apply after 30-day free trial. Cancel any time. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, speaks to audiences around the world, promoting Ayn Rand's ideas in talks and books. Now, he's on your radio, here on AM560. The answer. All right, so the last four minutes of the Iran Brook Show on AM560. I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of sad. I, I'm going to miss you guys. All right, we've got Sean, not the Sean, but a Sean. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Sean, have you, you got yourself on mute or something? Oh, hey, uh, Iran, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, it's uh, John, not uh, Sean. Oh, but, John. Uh, okay, hey, I don't I know. It's on my screen. It says why, Sean. Why are you leaving us? I'm, you know, I'm leaving because uh, basically AIM 560 won't pay me to stay. And um, 
you know, so far I paid them in order to do the show. And uh, there's only so much, so much money I can spend on this. And I think there are other opportunities that are bigger, uh, that afford me a larger audience, and that hopefully ultimately will lead to uh, syndication. And uh, I'm hoping one day to be to be national and to make a lot of money doing this. <laughs> so. Oh, sure. Well, well, th- well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed listening to your show while you were in my market. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm born and raised in Chicago, and I probably – wouldn't be I, I've always loved Iran, but I wouldn't be tuned into the radio every week if you hadn't done this uh, adventure. And uh, thank you. Well, I appreciate that. It, you know, and if if you want to let AM five sixty know you're going to miss me, that would be great. I uh, really appreciate the call, Sean, and the rest of you. Anybody who misses me, just let AM five sixty know that they should put me on as a daily host and pay me the big bucks, and uh, you'll have me back even uh, bigger than ever. Um, so here's the bottom line, guys. I want you all to take your mind seriously, which means facts, 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 not emotions, not speculations, not revelation, no mysticism, no conspiracy theories, facts, evidence-based thinking. The only kind of thinking. You can't have thinking without evidence-based. Think, think, think. And what's the purpose of thinking? At the end of the day, the purpose of thinking is to be successful. It's to make your life a success, to use a cliche to be the best that you can be. Not just in any particular thing in life, not in any particular field, not just in your profession, but in life itself. Be the best that you can be in life itself. That's what Ayn Rand teaches us, that it's noble, that it's virtuous, that it's right. That's our purpose in life is to be the best that we can be in everything that we do. Not better than other people. Other people are not the standard. You are the standard. I am the standard for myself. So be a rational egoist. Be rationally selfish. And then expect of other people basically to leave you alone. Hopefully to live successful, independent lives and to trade with them, win-win relationships. Other people, incredibly va- incredible value, spiritually and materially. So you want to have great relationships with other people. You want to live the best life that you can live. And for that, you need to live in a society. And hopefully that society is composed of other people like you. But some of them are going to be bad people. And that's why you need government. You need government because some of them are going to be bad. And to protect you from those bad people, we need a monopoly over the use of force. We need a government who's there, whose only job is to protect us. Not from our choices, not from ourselves, but from bad guys, from terrorists, from criminals, from invaders. And that's a government that protects individual rights and does nothing else. All right, that in short is what I stand for. That's what Ayn Rand stood for. Go read Ayn Rand. Keep following me. Keep listening to the podcast, Twitter, Facebook. Don't lose touch. Thank you, Chicago. This is better. The Yaron Brook Show. With Thanks, guys. Yeah, me too. Thanks a lot. Sure, we'll bump into each other somewhere, someplace. Thanks. I'll twist knobs and push sliders anytime. Appreciate it.